It's finals time in the Liberty A-League and for the first time in this National League, there is a tomorrow for the defeated team. But a golden ticket straight to the grand final is what is on offer here in this semi-final between the Premier's plate winners, Sydney FC, and four-time champions, Melbourne City. Cogra ready to host a venue that has seen semi-final drama in past years. Sydney FC at the heart of that. And they go up against a team tonight in Melbourne City that has never tasted defeat in a finals match. An imperious seven win with one after extra time and one penalty shootout record. Sydney FC make no changes to the starting 11 that defeated Adelaide 1-0 last Sunday to capture the Premier's plate, but they make one change on the bench. Courtney Vine returns from injury. The youngster Carly Johnson drops out of the match day squad. Otherwise, it's an uninterrupted team that scored 36 and conceded just six while losing only one game on the way to finishing top of the Liberty A-League table. Melbourne City, by contrast, make three changes to the team that defeated Western Sydney Wanderers 2-0 last Sunday. In come Letitia McKenna and TJ Blanich, while Rebecca Stott returns as well after missing the match day squad. Chelsea Blissett, Misha Westland and Caitlin Carrich go to the bench, while Darcy Malone is out of the match day squad. Winner goes to the grand final, loser goes to next Sunday's preliminary final. For the first time, a team gets a double chance for finishing in the top two. But who will go direct to the decider? Now we find out. Sydney FC take kickoff, and immediately last week's match winning goal scorer Paige Satchel was trying to get involved. Instead, it's another Kiwi, Rebecca Stott, who steadies on the ball. Grace Gill, yourself, Georgia Yeoman, Dale and Neve Owens were talking in pre-game about Melbourne City having never been defeated in a final. They've only been to extra time once, they've only been to penalties once. They're a team that just knows how to perform at the business end of the season regardless of who wears the shirt. Absolutely, it's a, a very impressive statistic for Melbourne City and similarly Georgia mentioned in pre-game that they're the only team to have beaten Sydney this year so they do go in with that game plan of knowing how they can actually get that result away against a formidable Sydney FC side. Charlie Rule is a magnet to the ball at the moment. And again, ventures down the right flank. Satchel. Sydney have got numbers back in cover. And so Sydney opt to concede some territory. Satchel, neat touch to lose the attention of Vlanich. Then engages Heatley and gets through her. Hawksby, tangle of legs. Once, twice, and a free kick is there. And Rebecca Stott protests her innocence as Sydney have a free kick. You'd suggest right on the very outer limit of shooting range. Yeah, a couple of little wayward touches there from Paige Satchel that put Hawksby in a bit of a tricky spot. It was just a coming together of legs on that one there. Stop too, not too sure about where the foul came from. Taylor Ray. Does she fancy a direct shot here with three in the wall? It is a dink. It's to Rachel Lowe. It's a save by Barbieri. And the power wasn't there from Lowe when inexplicably she was totally free as a bird at the penalty spot. Exactly as we spoke about there with that ball just being dinked into top of the six yard box. Rachel Lowe completely unmarked. That's got to be a finish for Sydney FC. It's a top save for Melissa Barbieri. She's got a good a, a good hand, a good couple of hands to it really, but hasn't been challenged by the shot from Rachel Lowe. Now is that TJ Vlanich's direct opponent or is she just the unlucky one that's trailing her in the frame there? Can. And now Abini with a little sidestep, but straight to Caitlin Torpy, all very scrappy, and Ali Green can't run that pass down. And the question is, Grace, have Melbourne City weathered the initial storm? Are they about to swing the pendulum of general play? Yeah, it does certainly feel like there's been a slight momentum shift, starting with Sydney, but Melbourne City now. Davidson finds its way to Vlanich, who's advanced. Vlanich! What a save by Wyman! Jada Wyman, when called upon, has starred this season. And TJ Vlanich agonisingly close to what would have been just her second career goal. 
Well, how about this for her first touch of the game from Jada Wyman to parry that one over the crossbar. That's pretty impressive. And Jada Wyman, unsurprising from her to see her step up time and time again. Can Rihanna Polisina find a breakthrough for Melbourne City? Wait. In swinger. Wilkinson was up and hit the number of Letitia McKenna. She was facing away from the ball. And Sydney FC will try for a full field counter. Satchel. And uh, apologies if you caught Paige Satchel's frustration there through the effects microphone. That was a quality corner in there for Melbourne City, though, as we see here. Policina knocks in a really good delivery. Hannah Wilkinson rises to it, and it's McKenna who's just turned away at that last moment, and it's glanced off her leg there, but she'll be disappointed not to keep eyes on that one, just to, to try and steer that delivery in the direction of the goal. Letitia McKenna from Perth originally, one season at the Brisbane Raw, and now down to Melbourne City. On the ball once again here. And sending it out to the left. Vlanic is trying to make it count in an attacking sense. What a probing pass, and what a mistake! Hannah Wilkinson scores an absolute gift! Characteristic from Nat Tobin, Hannah Wilkinson scores for Melbourne City and they lead in this semi-final. Well, Melbourne City have stood up to this one. That was such a great build-up there, though, from the woman you just spoke about in Letitia McKenna. The pass on the Harvey Norman replay that she finds out of out of traffic here. That pass there has taken three, four Sydney defenders out in that moment. Like you mentioned, an uncharacteristic mistake from Nat Tobin. But that is a goal as simple as anything for Hannah Wilkinson just to knock that one into the back of the net. Nothing Jada Wyman could have done in that in that case. It's not like they weren't warned about TJ Vlain. It's just the passage of play before, though. To ghost down that left flank again, I guess holding Satchel and Rule accountable, and after absorbing so much and doing so much defending for the first 20 minutes, Vlanich has a massive say on the opening goal of the night. Oh, she does, and you can't take away the quality of that delivery too. Off the, off the back of the Sydney FC defence there, a beautiful ball through, and against somewhat the run of play we were me mentioning just moments ago, Teo, how the, the slight shift in momentum where Melbourne City had weathered the first sort of 15 minutes of storm of Sydney FC and they've come back with a goal and a, a, a really simple finish. Now Melbourne City have something to defend. Here's Vlanich marauding down the left side. First time ball over the head of all in the penalty area. Bartorpi at the back post, hooks it to Policina. They're lining up McKenna and Wyman down for the save. Even had Charlotte McLean behind her on the goal line, and McKenna brings a save, but maybe not the right placement. That was a great build up there by Melbourne City, starting with Winnie Heatley. A really positive touch around her player as she finds that wide ball, but this cutback from Torpy is just perfection, and McKenna, she needs to do better with that opportunity. Hasn't challenged Wyman at all, and, and really a free look at goal. She's got the whole frame to shoot at. Straight to the feet of Nat Tobin. One minute of stoppage about to expire. And so Sydney through Paige Satchel with one last hurrah for the first half. And that is a great tackle from Winona Heatley. Will they have time to take the corner kick? They're going to have to hustle, and that's what Mackenzie Hawksby is going to do. Can Mackenzie Hawksby deliver? Right into the pack of players. Good header by Wilkinson away. Taylor Ray, second time ball. No half-time whistle just yet. Hawksby blocked. Vlainage vital, and that does prompt the whistle for the break. And it's Hannah Wilkinson's goal. It was a gift at the time, and Melbourne City, after absorbing pressure for the first 20 minutes, and one foot in the grand final as things stand. Sydney FC nil, Melbourne City one. So Grace Gill, if you were going to sub someone on, it may as well be Courtney Vine, and she has replaced Paige Satchel. Well, it is well and truly Vine time here, and as Sydney FC's leading goal scorer, it's no surprise to see her on with a full 45 minutes to try and put one in the back of the net. Vine with six in ten this season, and Melbourne City take kickoff to start the second half, and Rebecca Stott is off and running. Can they score from kickoff, City? As Vine will get her first touch and hook the ball away. They're not out of danger just yet. Vlainich, and they've turned it into a shot on target. So 
these interesting treating kickoffs like a set piece that Melbourne City do. That's the first time they've actually had a shot on target at a, as a result. So they're progressing. Maybe they're going to turn it into a, a goal direct from kickoff before the season is out. Of course, if Sydney FC score today, we'll get to see kickoff again. Right now, though, Melbourne City in the ascendancy. Heatley's pass met by Polisina. TJ Vlanich intercepted by Charlie Rule. And as Rule sends it out for a throw, one sub has been made. Confirmation there, Satchel off final. Wilkinson. Now Vlanich, Stott making a run ahead of play, and that's exactly where Vlanich goes. Great first touch by Stott, breaks out to the left. Now Charlotte McLean wants to corral Stott wide. Here's the run, McKenna, Wilkinson calls for it in the middle, and the tap-in is there for two! McKenna sets up Wilkinson, and Melbourne City have one foot in the grand final now. Oh, that is superb there from Melbourne City. Again, a really beautiful team build-up, beginning with a beautiful deft touch from that woman on screen there, Rebecca Scott Stott on the Harvey Norman replay. This ball through, the delayed run from McKenna was just timed to perfection. And again, drawing in a defender, and Hannah Wilkinson's able just to tap that home near post. Poor defending from Sydney FC. That's a beautiful finish, though, for Melbourne City. Hannah Wilkinson, 29 years old. That is a career's worth of half chances, barely a sniff. So many players, that goes off the shin, it goes wide, they don't meet it properly. That was perfection. I know it's a close-range tap-in, but under that sort of pressure in that close quarters, that's a good goal. That's a very good goal, and we mentioned there as well the build-up, the touch from Stott and the delayed run from McKenna. And then a near post run from Wilkinson. It was just a beautiful team effort. Hannah Wilkinson looking a little bit proppy after that one. As we see Remy Simpson making way. I think you were onto this early, Grace. It just hasn't been her night tonight. We saw some signs of frustration settling in early for Remy Simpson. Passes weren't going her way. She wasn't getting first to the ball. And a couple of early offsides. We could just see that frustration coming into her game. Sarah Hunter comes on for Rachel Lowe. Ali Green puts the head down, burrows forward. Ali Green breaking into the box now. All about the delivery. Elevates the cross. Vine is there! Courtney Vine gives Sydney hope! And the only woman to have scored an open play goal in a finals match against Melbourne City has done it again. Well, Courtney Vine, what a finish there for S Sydney FC. I mentioned earlier, she'd only scored six goals on her right foot this year. This is certainly not her foot on this occasion. It's a great late run into the box and a, a good meandering run from Ali Green. But watch Courtney Vine here. She delays that run and just nips in front of Winnie Hitley. And that's a fantastic finish. A great header from Courtney Vine. Meandering? That's Ryan Bloody Giggs. That's brilliant from Ali Green. And what a header from Courtney Vine. And now this is the big finish we were hoping for. Oh, we've got a game on our hands here. It's a brilliant run from Ali Green. You're right, Teo. And service is on point. The late run once more from Courtney Vine is just time to perfection. That is a fantastic finish. And Courtney Vine knows the importance of G'ing up the team, getting them back to the middle. Melbourne City are going to want to take the oxygen out of this situation because now it's Sydney FC who will have the adrenaline pumping, feeling as though City could be vulnerable. Courtney Vine, her seventh goal of the season. Again, great observation by you, Grace. All six previous had been on the right foot. That one, a crashing header into the back of the net. And it's game on at Cogra. Just a reminder that if we're level at the end of the 90, it'll be conventional, extra time, 15 minutes each way. Long ball, Vine has sprung the defence. Flag stays down. Courtney Vine on the tight end. Closer than that. Oh, well, what an opportunity for Sydney FC to equalise. Courtney Vine found herself in a bit of space over the top. So we see her just hanging off the shoulder there. A 
off Flanich, and it's a great run through. She's closed her angle right down, though. She, we know she likes operating from those kind of spaces, but she really needed to take that first touch across the body of Flanich toward the goal. And then she's got a whole much more amount of surface area to aim for, but she's made this acute angle really hard for herself. And it was Ali Green with that pass again. It would have been another assist for the Sydney left back. Hunter up for the header. Hawksby rolls central, did it nicely too. Over the top, the raw speed of Courtney Vine. Kick is in, put down! And the whistle goes, no advantage for Courtney. The red card's out of the pocket. The decision's been made. Well, I think she knows what's coming here. So here's the challenge again from Vlaenich, legging Courtney Vine. However, should it have been advantage? Should Cote Rojas have been allowed to follow in? Let's not forget, Melbourne City is still leading. 10 versus 11 isn't a hugely profound difference when there's only one minute to go. Princess Abini over the free kick. And putting it out, so situation dealt with, you would say. Maybe the red card from Vlanich, just the cost of doing business. Yeah, perhaps so, and there will be questions around whether or not that should have been a, a play of advantage on that occasion, Princess Abini unable to keep that shot down. Had good shape on it. And so, Flanich's season may be on the line here, depending on the severity of this injury. Are we about to see Tobin make amends? Tumeth with a huge tackle, and Vandermeer gets it away. Ali Green following up. One assist already tonight. Hawksby brings it down. Cote! Cote! Sydney at a level. The mark of champions. Cote Rojas sends Cote a crazy. Extra time beckons in the semi final. Well, Cote Rojas, what a substitution. What an impact as we see. Captain Nat Tobin just limping off here, but we are all tied up at two goals apiece as we have another look here. Nat Tobin is still down on the deck. Another good ball into the box from Ali Green. The touch from Hawksby, and it's a bit of a questionable strike, but it doesn't matter. It's in the back of the net, and that's what you want your substitutes to do. That's Cote Rojas coming up big for Sydney FC. Maria Jose Cote Rojas with her fifth goal of the season. And Sydney FC against 10 players in the opposition. Ah, win probability, my old friend. And Melbourne City now up to 36.3%. Sydney FC have swung the balance. The red card, of course, a huge factor in that. Courtney Vine in possession. Taking on Blissett, taking on Policina, and the clearance is going to pitch right on the line. It's out for a corner. Mackenzie Hawksby leading the competition in assists. Her set pieces have been a huge factor in that. Mr. Barbieri waits at the far post. Here comes the corner then. And it's three! Sarah Hunter! Her first goal in Sydney Colours! The Sky Blues now have turned it around from 2-0 down and are looking good to return to the grand final in two weeks' time. Well, that is an excellent finish there from Sarah Hunter, the young Sarah, an absolute thumping header from a Hawksby corner. The delivery is great, but that header just come through with such power. Sarah Hunter completely unchallenged. Drives it out to the left. Caitlin Carriage waiting for support to arrive. And it's there in the form of Davidson. Well, she looked up and just had the open pass to Policina, but she still wins a foul. But interesting decision. Free kick. City will take it. So there are numbers in the penalty area. Again, it's going to be a chaos ball. Into the scrap it goes. Vanderbeer's flick header on. And it's held onto by Jada Wyman. Wyman drives it out to Rojas, so a pretty good clearance at that. Back comes Westland, Vine is free as a bird, Courtney Vine for a spot in the grand final. 
Well, you think that would be it? That would be the nail in the coffin there. Sydney FC and the substitutes once again combining. Rojas doing a really wonderful job off that ball from Jada, Jada Wyman. You can see she's just in a, an expansive space, so all she has to do here is hold the ball up until she has the support. Absolutely no one around Courtney Vine. It's a really great technical finish. But Melbourne City just run off their feet and no one's made that defensive transition run to track the blistering run of Courtney Vine. Well, in a battle of the two clubs that fancy themselves as the standard bearers and the banner leaders of this competition, it is Sydney FC with a fitness win. I mean, that is... Melbourne City will take that seriously. And they are going to have to go and lick their wounds and they will go to the preliminary final and as of right now, it could be Adelaide United, who Melbourne City did beat, home and away. So two wins from two, or it could be a Melbourne derby in the preliminary final with Sydney FC, as things stand, barring an absolute miracle, waiting in the decider. Well, still a couple of huge games coming up. Both Sunday's match between Adelaide United and Melbourne victory, it's just going to be such a spectacular show between those two teams. Vine on a hat-trick. Barbieri's out of the line. Oh, the assistant referee's flagging. Huge decision here. Could be a season-changing decision. It's two red cards. We have another look at this one. Melissa Barbieri well out of her 18-yard box, and it's a handball on that occasion. And the second red card for Melbourne City. Rihanna Palacina didn't need any convincing that her number was up. Here she comes, consoling Melissa Barbieri as she goes. Sally James, the recruit from Canberra, who broke her finger in pre-season, then suffered COVID. James, just 19 years old. Tonight is her sixth appearance in the Liberty A-League. Nat Tobin takes the free kick, the wall does its job. Tobin follows up on her left foot this time and puts it over the bar. Here's Jessica Nash. Captain Carriage. The 120 is up. Sydney FC are off to the grand final. After an epic semi-final where they came from 2-0 down and have triumphed 4-2 in extra time. They are celebrating it like they've won the whole thing. And based on the way they play tonight, how could you possibly back against them? A special night for the Sydney FC fans, both at the ground and at home watching. This is one that will live in the memory, and the good news, if there is any for Melbourne City, is they get to live to fight another day.